You're listening to the Gabe Molina Podcast. This is exactly <laughs> how one. <laughs> this is how I lived before COVID. Yeah. <laughs> I don't see anybody. I don't do anything. I don't go anywhere. So, I'm bitch about the same shit. <laughs> well, I, I, well, we talked about starting off with your uh, your your small stint or large stint. I can't remember. I think it was a small stint. Oh, it was very small. And roller derby. What were you doing with roller derby? Um, well, I've always been a fan of skating. Um, you know, I never product, knew that. A product of the 80s. I mean, you, oh, yeah. we used to have those where you were, you know, your sneakers and you just strapped those little, I don't know, they look like tin oh, wheels. Oh, yeah. Remember those? They went over your <laughs> shoes, right? Yeah. And then, you know, Rainbow Bright, she had like uh, skates. So, yeah, anyway, but she wouldn't I, form in anybody in the face. I know. I <laughs> loved skating and I always, you know, I saw some roller derby stuff, I guess, you know, from the late 70s, early 80s. And then they put out, you know, another roller derby movie. Um, I just always wanted to do it. And, I played volleyball, I guess, for corporate challenges and things like that. It, but you've always it, been really active. I've always, I've always been doing something. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> but that pull, one was a, a little closer. Okay, that one was a new challenge. But let me tell you, the sport of roller derby is extremely hard to understand. Uh, you're playing offense and defense at the same time, but also trying to keep track of um, the distance between. Tra- I don't even. I still don't even know the rules. I just went out there and hit people and knocked people down as much as I could. And skated as fast as I could. I don't understand so. the rules either. All I looked were, were for bloomers. That's all. <laughs> and then it wasn't like you guys were playing on the roller derby track you see on TV. You were playing in a parking we lot. We were in a parking lot. Yeah. Um, we did do one. What's funny is we are the last bout I had was like May, what, five years ago, I think, or four years. I can't remember. It popped up in my Facebook memories recently. <laughs> um, so because the first one was like a March. And so I did I did years of practicing, but then I only really did a couple of events. Well, I think I did one in Kerrville, too. But there was one in Round Rock, and it was actually an indoor um, facility, and I felt claustrophobic. It was like the worst feeling I had the whole time I was, <laughs> there's pictures of me, and I'm like pale white, I was not doing well. Um, I'm like, maybe I just need to be outside on the concrete. I have a nice little scar. I saw that a minute well, ago. Well, this one's actually from tennis. <laughs> <laughs> I took a dive on the tennis court, too. But they, they kind of match. Um, and this one is where a, a pebble or a piece of um, asphalt. Stayed stuck. It, I, I went down. It was funny because I charged at, and I was going to break up the, the group of um, of girls, or the, the pack is what they call them. And so I was skating extremely fast, joking around, kind of took a charge. <laughs> and they it, they broke apart a lot easier, and I literally lost my feeding. They went up in the air. <laughs> and at that time, I as I went down sliding, um, some asphalt got stuck in my um, elbow guard and Ugh. just scraped. This is like three days before the actual about, so I was already injured. I saw I, <laughs> the event we went to was in New Braunfels. Yes. And I, I get that y'all learn how to <laughs> fall. You know, you do the, the you go down to your knees. And because yeah. I noticed everybody was doing it the same way. So I was kind of like, okay, well, this is this is how they, they learn to fall. <laughs> but in that asphalt, it was like, yeah. oh, my goodness. Yeah, I mean, it, and some of them, you know, like you said, they'd fall on their elbows or whatever. Mm-hmm. And it, I mean, you are geared up. But, you know, when you're moving that fast and, and then it's asphalt again, oh. Yeah. That was a, it looked and, pretty painful. I mean, it's, it's a very time consuming sport from the setup, you know, from the practices. Um, we're actually, we're actually a nonprofit organization as well. And oh, so really? I ended up being like the VP at one point. Um, and so, you know, there's a lot of work involved. We did, we did, um, charity work in New Braunfels. We did some Habitat for Humanity. I actually learned to build framing for a house at that time. That's cool. So, yeah, there's some really cool stuff. And, you know, we gave back from, um, from what we brought in from some of the, from some of the events, so it was a it was a great learning experience. In that fall, and in another couple of falls, I somehow in uh, chipped and inverted uh, the my tailbone somehow, and so um, and Wait, I had you a lot inverted your tailbone. You said that it was like chipped and and like well the piece that I chipped <laughs> inverted. Or oh, got you, got yeah. You. So no, not didn't invert. Because I'm I'm imagining <laughs> you with like a like a little dog with a tail clipped. <laughs> You know, because <laughs> pointed upward. It may look like Sean was like Sean was like, "What did I marry?" <laughs> he may be saying that anyway. I don't know. <laughs> oh, but, um, you know, it was like I said, it was it was something fun, and I, I'm just so glad that I could say I did it. But um, you know, I was Naylor Swift for a while. <laughs> you know, I I love to sing. I like to you know, Naylor hit people and yeah so <laughs> it, it kind of went well together and it was fun and we were the um the worst girls the wor- that's right yep, the worst w uh, u r s t that's awesome yep, and now so. you're doing tennis we'll get you in the tennis 
Uh, so Sean's really into tennis. He, oh. He's been playing for yeah, since he was young. Um, and I guess even before we moved to Wimberley, he had kind of joined the Wimberley Community um, Tennis Organization, WCTA, and started playing with some people there. And, uh, I mean, you know, we had a great tennis team in, in George West, right? Cause we had, <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't know we had tennis courts. No. I'm joking. Um, <laughs> we'd hang out there all the time. They were right there next to the cafeteria. Walk across. <laughs> um, you know, my dad actually got out there and played with me quite a bit mm-hmm. in high school. He was really good. Um, but, you know, we had basically whoever wasn't coaching a sport then took the tennis team. So I played. I played in junior high. I played in high school. Um, but I never learned, really. So um, there was uh, – Wimberley is a huge, a huge tennis community. Um, really? Some really good players, yeah. I thought it was just wine. Um, that, too. You know, Dan, they do it simultaneously. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so um, – Anyway, so actually, that's how the only, I mean, the first way that I actually met people there, um, I joined like a little morning group um, of ladies, and most of them were moms, and I found out most of them were moms of kids, you know, same age. And so, um, yeah, so I got out there every morning and hit the ball sometimes, sometimes I miss, sometimes I swung and miss really hard, and sometimes I still do that. <laughs> <laughs> so it's been about three years, and we joined, um, you know, a club in, in New Braunfels as well, and so now I'm, now I'm in, um, Currently signed up for four leagues, um, but only, well, only two are going on. Two are going to start uh, in a couple of weeks. So, um, but yeah, it keeps you active. It keeps you moving. It does. Getting out of bed's painful these yeah, days. It it is, and especially when you got to go fill up the tank and then drive to San Antonio. <laughs> <laughs> I may not have joined as many leagues had I known. <laughs> had you known gas was going to get out of control. <laughs> exactly. But um, but it's fun. I mean, it's just great. And you, I'm you know meeting a lot of people and, and you know and then you see people around you're like hey we played together a couple years ago actually i i remember this um match i my first time playing singles i guess as an adult and i i was so i don't think i slept the night before i i was so nervous because it takes stamina and i I know i I do not have stamina (laughs) i I disagree yeah i know i do not so um i just want to like put the ball away and be done next point so (laughs) yeah and so i um i was actually winning and i remember um I was running for a ball and I blew my calf, which is kind of a thing in tennis. They call it tennis calf. Like it literally just feels like you get shot in the back of the leg. And so like I'm running for the ball and going to swing and it was like, ah, I'm just down. Really? Like, nailer down was on the ground. Is it, it's a muscle thing or is it like it's, a tendon yes, thing? It's, um, so yeah, the gastroc uh, muscle, I've actually done it twice now and I've actually blown two different areas my calf actually split the second time where it went and no wrapped kidding. outside yes I, i'll show you pictures afterwards oh. my leg i the skin had never moved in that direction and so it felt really really it was out of place it was really strange but um but at that time so it's funny two weeks ago or so i went and played in austin and i'm introducing myself to these two girls that i didn't know and i was like your name sounds familiar and i was like we played together well we probably saw each other at a tournament <clears throat> and she's like and I said, oh my gosh, I was playing you. Of course, I didn't want to say I was I was winning, but I was playing you <laughs> when my calf blew. And she goes, oh, that was you. <laughs> now you're known as the calf lady. <laughs> yeah, so it's, like, it's funny because I introduced myself a couple of days ago to somebody else. And I was like, I think we met the other night at tennis class. And she was like, really? And I said... I was the one that rolled into the net, and I was like, they got all scraped up at the beginning of the class, and she was like, oh, Sarah! <laughs> <laughs> Making a name for myself. You know you always left an impression on people. <laughs> well, you know, I kind of have to leave my mark somewhere. I think it comes from, uh, I think it comes from uh, your, your dad. Uh, it's very possible. He, he left an impression on a lot of people, too. Yeah, thanks. So I think what, what, one thing people need to understand is you had a very special dad. I did. He was... Uh, he was extremely different in a whole lot of ways. Mm-hmm. So uh, we know him as Coach Lenz. Mm-hmm. And uh, what was his full name? Just Gregory Lenz? Gregory Joseph Lenz. Gregory Joseph Lenz. Mm-hmm. Didn't know the Joseph part. Mm-hmm. What, what year did y'all end up coming to George West? I think we got there in 91. Yep. So I, we, yeah. Nobody there had ever seen anybody the size of Coach Lenz. <laughs> you know, there was always some big people. And... and uh, uh, but he was just, he was a presence, you know, I know the pizza palace wasn't ready for it. No, <laughs> <laughs> but, neither was pizza hut in three of her, so. <laughs> but you know, it was funny because when, when he came into town, first of all, you're struck by his, his size and his voice. You know, he was very, uh, it was hard to miss coach Lynn's, mm-hmm. you know, and, uh, uh, immediately, I, I think he was coaching maybe uh, JV and freshman, maybe I don't know, but I, I remember JV for sure because that's that's where we had. He started assistant 
on varsity under was Johnson. He? Yeah, because it was later he, he went down to, yeah. And I'm glad he did. You know, a lot of times in hindsight, I look back, and I even thought about this the other day. It, it's so weird. You know, uh, uh, I talked to Bubba Garcia. He came to, uh, to my birthday party last year. And, yeah. and it's funny because we're all, you know, middle-aged, and, and we still talk about your dad. And uh, it's funny because recently I was I was kind of thinking about him, and uh, once we were talking about doing this podcast, and, mm-hmm. and uh, it made me it made me wonder sometimes. I was kind of like, he never. I don't think that he really coached uh, varsity, did he? Yeah, he coached. Well, yeah, he, he coached. It was defense. I think I think it was defensive. Okay. Well, I don't know, but even anyway, he was under Coach Johnson when he first got there. So. Well, I, I always wonder. I always felt like maybe. A guy like him with his credentials was maybe wasting time with the JV team uh, during practice and, mm-hmm. and whatever else. And in hindsight, the personality that he had, dealing with the personalities that he he was coaching, you know, at uh, on the JV t- side, mm-hmm. it, it was almost that's exactly where he needed to be. Yeah. You know, we had a lot of people that were yeah. just attitude and yeah. you know ornery a little bit and it was like he was perfect for us yeah. you know he connected with you right away he was able to have conversations with you and and uh i never i talked to people from time to time and i always I always tell everybody i i have the best dad you know yeah. everybody thinks they have the best dad but I, I know i got the best dad you know so i don't my my interactions with him were strictly at the school uh, every now and then, when I call your house and tell him I was going to marry you, uh, <laughs> it was so funny because I'd go, "Hey, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to marry your daughter," and he'd always just well, that road diva. Oh, I don't know. You're going to have to ask Sarah. <laughs> but uh, uh, you know, he was always he was just a good dude. So wait, okay, because I'm, I'm confused now. He it was he, maybe he was JV because he, he, later he went to junior high, and so maybe that's what I'm thinking. He didn't oh, go did from varsity. But you guys are the ones who had him as a coach, so you yeah. would know. Yeah, yeah. He, so we he had him at team. Uh, he may have helped out on varsity. Yeah, I'm sure, yeah. He's but probably doing both. I, it was always kind of like, why isn't he just full-time with varsity? Yeah. And, uh, uh, you know, we, we had a lot of just attitude and, and uh, uh, straight. other people probably wouldn't. You know, Coach G was there, of course, you know. And uh, uh, Coach G had a little bit different mentality than Lynn's. But, you know, I guess with his background in playing college football and pro football, he dealt with people that, you know, were arrogant and thought mm-hmm. they were awesome when we were really weren't, you know. So he interacted with us really well. And even just off the field, too, uh, you know, just being a, a solid example of a person, you know. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's funny because you can sit there and you can lecture kids at that age and, and try and point them in the right direction. And, or you can kind of live a certain lifestyle that, and, and to me, that's how you make a, a bigger impression on somebody is yeah. living a certain life that other kids will look at and they go, well, I want to emulate that. You know, I want to, I want to treat people the way coach Lenz does. I want to do things like coach Lenz does. And it's not so much of, Hey, do what I'm saying. It's more yeah. of do what I'm doing. You know, I want to drive and, a motorcycle while holding all my books. He did what? Five feet down the road. I I want to drive a motorcycle like five feet down the road (laughs) to school while holding my books like this. (laughs) Did you ever see him doing that? Mm -mm. (laughs) Get that little motorcycle that he um, just rode. I remember the bike. I remember. Yeah. Yeah. And he would have like all his books and his little leather binder and stuff. (laughs) (laughs) I'm like, why don't you just walk? (laughs) (laughs) Well, you know, he'd always, uh, I'm sure he had knee problems too. You know, you kind of see his knees were a little swollen. He had no, he had no ACL. Oh, he really? went to get his he went to get um his knees scoped and of course he insisted on getting them both done at the same time. Yeah. And you can't put that a size of a man on crutches and like well first off he was sinking into the ground like trying to get to the house and uh so he couldn't but you can't put pressure on either leg. Yeah. Like it would he he literally we backed up to the porch and I remember him like pushing himself out of the back of my mom's Jeep and why would you get both done at the same time? He was just like, so he was so insistent. I'm just going to get done. And then it was, Oh, it was so painful for him. And then afterwards he was like, did you know I didn't have an ACL? And I'm like, what do you mean you don't have an ACL? And he's like the anterior crucial ligament. I'm like, I know what it is. Like, what do you mean you don't have it? And he said, um, yeah. So he shows me the video. He's all proud. He's like, showed me the video. And he's like, yeah, this is where the doctor's like, got his little thing. And they're going, this is where your ACL is supposed to be. And he goes, yeah, I think I remember that snapping during a game or something. I just kept playing. And I'm like, <laughs> what? Yeah, they just kept playing. Well, you know, with, with that type of person in, in that era, I mean, everybody was a tough guy. Yeah. You know, and, and if you weren't a tough guy, you were probably not on the team very long. Yeah. You know, so you, you either 
uh, played through those things and lived through that pain or, or you lost your spot, you know. And then being his size, you know, I'm sure his whole life, I, I, I doubt, for some reason in my head, I don't imagine him having a growth spurt. I imagine him always being, you know, six foot something, right, you know, <laughs> right out the womb. <laughs> yeah, he, he did have growth spurts. I mean, was, he actually, they couldn't afford shoes um, to to sustain his growth spurt. And so he had like hammer toes. Oh, really? Like, yeah. What size shoe was he wearing at the he time? He was a 13, I think he was a 13 and a half, but my, my, mom, my mom said he was like a triple E, like in boots or something. Mm. But um, he probably would have been a 15 or so if his, yeah, because his toes were literally like this. At the Jeez. Time. Yeah. How tall was he? 6'5". Six, 6'5". Five. Six, five. And typically all through my life, I knew him as, you know, from being 320 to, to 350. Um, I think maybe when he played, he was maybe 280-ish or something and up to 300, I think. So So we, we talked a little bit about it earlier, but what college did he go to? Where did he play football he and all that good stuff? He went to Trinity University. He's now in the Trinity University Hall of Fame. That's awesome. Yeah, it was a really proud day for him. And um, and it was uh, towards the end, you know, when he was, his CT was kind of... Um, when he was, it was bad. And so I remember him, I mean, they had a football game. So a lot of the people that he even coached and that he went to school with, cause he kind of did that simultaneously as well. He was like an assistant, uh, excuse me, teacher's coach. Um, and, and then he played and went to school there. But I remember him afterwards, you know, they went and set up and he had his little game balls, like I said, Atlanta Falcons memorabilia and stuff. And, um, uh, I said, so what do you have to do? You know, I said, what do you, what do you have to do here? <clears throat> He's like, oh, you know, just come by. If people have questions for me, I, you know, talk to them and answer their questions. And, and he's like, you've you know, got just, his, you've got his mannerisms down so well. Well, you know, his, his little shadow for a while. But in, anyway, I said, I said, oh, that sounds great. And he goes, yeah. And he goes, do you mind staying here in case I don't know the answers? <laughs> and I was like, oh, I'm yeah. My heart, but yeah, but yeah. So like he, I, he had stories about playing even tennis there. You know, hanging out at the tennis courts. Um, it was a great, great time I think to be in San Antonio back then. So yeah. in the seventies. And so he played for Atlanta. and He played for somebody else, right? So he played for. Let me get my cup. Oh played, yeah. yeah, you've got you've got these awesome <laughs> like cups Christmas. that you guys had made. Yeah. Yeah, and it's got a beautiful this, picture of him. His, his best friend, um, Nick Sobel, had a bunch of these done. And we can kind of order or replenish our stock as as we need to. Um, but they're great. But, yeah, so, I mean, he was – we always kind of knew that he was uh, with the Cardinals, Bills, um, Jets, Falcons. But Jets was, like, more of a tryout. Falcons was where he had most of his time. And then he played for the World Football League, which dissolved pretty quickly, I think, after a couple of years. Mm. So a lot of the New York Jets, I think, went to the New York Stars when they – um, what they call like hopped or jumped from the NFL to the WFL. Um, they went to the New York stars, but then the New York stars ended up changing to, uh, the Charlotte Hornets. So, um, one of his best friends, um, John Elliott was also with the, um, or he played with the jets for quite some time, uh, when they won their super bowl and stuff. And he went over to the New York stars as well. So I think that was, what was here? Was that 74, 75? Yep. Yep. So, but he, they had reunions for that, you know, and they have, they had NFL alumni reunions that were good. Um, yeah, so <laughs> so he did all his life. I'm reading this cup and I see 1969 Texas Golden Gloves heavyweight champion. So, yeah. And what, <laughs> I didn't know that. What's funny, so my godfather that he later, that, so when we moved from San Antonio to Eagle Pass, we actually lived in a little town called Gamado between Eagle Pass and Del Rio. Sounds and burnt. It was. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, in, you know, home of like, I wanted to make a Leche Camado joke, but, you know, whatever. So we lived, like, actually right on the Rio Grande. It was a really, really cool, and cool place to grow up. But um, apparently, so he made some, they made some really good, really good friends. And we have, you know, my lifelong friend is their daughter. Um, but my godparents, they ended up being my godparents. And um, the Coach, Rod, Coach Rod, he was known as Coach Rod everywhere. Um, and I guess, I can't remember how many years they'd known each other, but in conversation came, came up, the Golden Gloves and stuff. They were at the same event. In oh, Santa really? Time. Yeah. <laughs> and my dad was heavyweight. And I think, um, I think Toto was, um, was maybe featherweight or like, I don't know which, which class, but, but they were at the same event. And of course everyone else is probably like, both of y'all boxed. Like we didn't even know the one of y'all boxed. <laughs> <laughs> Who knew? I couldn't imagine getting punched in the face right? by him. I mean, I remember one time we're sitting on the couch and this is when I was either in high school or first year of college, you know, driving a beetle. And we were sitting there and I, I kept, jacking around with him and just like he was sitting on the couch to watch tv and i was like boom, boom, you know just punching his arm and doing the stupid stuff being an <laughs> annoying person and he was just like stop it stop it and i was just dude, dude i just kept i was bored whatever mm-hmm. i was annoying him and he just goes 
Doom. And I was like, oh. <laughs> like, I, I was I said, okay, I'll stop. Like I just walked off. I'm like, I'm done. But he just literally just put I didn't even put any force into it, just went doom. And I was like, oh my god. Why did I do that? Hey, when you get funny. an arm that big moving yeah. in any direction, it's like trying to stop a freight train. <laughs> That's exactly I think I told you there was a clip from when he was playing in the World Football League and I couldn't find it. But that's exactly what the commentator said. <laughs> and it was like this. He had a voice deeper than Greg's. And he was like, when you got an old man like Lynn's coming after you, it's like a freight train. You're just going to go in any direction. <laughs> I was like, oh, wow. It's so cool hearing that. But, but that's, that's so, you know, obviously it's a, a common thought. <laughs> so how old were you, I guess, when uh, when you came into your life? Were you six you're, or seven? You were six or yeah. seven? Okay. Because mm-hmm. I see a lot of pictures of you that you post on Facebook. Mm-hmm. And, and you're pretty young. Yep. You're pretty young. So uh, I guess your mom met him maybe. In, where did she meet him? So they met at, I think the story is they met at Maggie's. Um, he was he was a bouncer there on uh, part-time. But they were actually, they, their paths had crossed at Samuel Clemens because he was a uh, assistant football coach there. And my mom was um, working in, as a secretary in the office, I think. And so their paths had crossed there, but they didn't really meet. But my mom had gone out one night, I think, with my aunt. And he was bouncing or doing no door throwing people out (laughs) i think it was called maggie's if i'm not mistaken um but yeah he was well known around the bombay bicycle club all that it was close to trinity you know so he was um yeah spent a lot of time that is awesome places but yeah they kind of i think they met there and he asked her out and rest is history so she didn't ask him out uh, no, I don't. She may, she may not even be accepted the first time. I don't know. She, no. I, you know what's funny is is uh, I, I you know you don't you don't pick up Coach Lenz as being a romantic man, but I'm sure he was. Oh, he was. I'm sure he, he had was. A huge, huge heart, and he loved like he loved gifting and things. I remember things like my mom would start throwing out ideas, you know, for what she wanted for Christmas or something or whatever. And we'd go the whole day of Christmas. We'd go to our Christmas events, open gifts, and you could kind of just see like he would never give her a gift. You know, and we're not saying the ever, but he would he wouldn't have given her a gift that whole day. And we'd be on the way home and he'd be like, Well, did you have a great Christmas? And she's like, mm. You know? <laughs> and then all of a sudden we get like five minutes from home. It's the end of the day. And he's like, What what is this? You know, and it'd be exactly what she wanted, or even better, you know, some you know, opal and ruby necklace or just I remember things like that where she's just or gold there was a strand of gold beads one time where he's like there's something stuck in the seat. And it's just, you know, <laughs> uh, of course, what you set yourself up for at that time is you better not mess up. <laughs> you better have that. You better to really by. not forget <laughs> right, one of these days. Because mom's sitting there waiting, you know, like, okay, it's five minutes till the end of my birthday or anniversary or whatever. <laughs> it's coming at some point. But no, he always did. Um, so yeah, it was funny. Um, uh, he just, he really, like I said, he, he cared so yeah. much about everything. So, yeah. well, you could get that. You got that when he was, uh, oh, yeah. when he was in, even just in school and practice and see him in the halls and, mm-hmm. and, uh, like people naturally, I think gravitated to him just because he had a good personality. You know, uh, it, it, it we started off kind of, well, I started off kind of talking about just his voice and his size, yeah. but after a while, you know, that, that gets your attention, but what keeps you around is his personality, oh, yeah. you know? And, uh, uh, an infectious laugh and smile, like totally. Oh like, yeah. Just, yeah. You know, I, we used to try and me and Thomas, he, uh, used to kind of take advantage of things in school. You know, we, we kind of did our own thing and it was funny <laughs> because every time we would try and manipulate him, it never worked. Nope. I mean, it, it's funny because in hindsight you look back and you go, Oh man, he saw everything coming from a mile away. <laughs> Because he'd uh, probably already done it. <laughs> he, he, he had you guys pegged from the beginning, probably because there were similar personalities and he'd already done it. Yeah. And that's the thing he always told me. You're not getting away with anything. He's like, I've done it all. You cannot fool me. He's so. probably done some things you hadn't even thought of yeah, doing. Yeah, 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 sure. he, I, w- I was telling my sister, we were talking about... Uh, we're talking about the podcast today, uh, I think yesterday, the day before, or something like that. And, you know, I told her, told her what we were going to talk about and Coach Lenz. And uh, I was telling her a story about, and I'll try and keep it PG because I'm sure your mom's going to listen. Or she better listen. <laughs> she's used to it. Uh, <laughs> Sometimes but, she's asked me, she's like, where do you pick up this stuff? And I'm like, mm, my dad. <laughs> <laughs> we were we were in playing JV. We were in Three Rivers. And uh, you, I'm sure you know the story. I'm, I've probably told you, but... It was so funny because it was kickoff, and the kid from Three Rivers got hit by somebody, and he did not get up. And so the ambulance had to come out and pick him up and take him off. And, you know, we're all standing on the sideline. It's really quiet. And 
he turns around and he looks and he says, uh, uh, who hit him? Uh, not in that voice. It was a yeah. lot deeper and, and stronger. And uh, Richie Cantu says, he hit me, sir. And he goes, see, that's what I'm talking about. You're all a bunch of lady parts. He says, you can't even take credit for a good hit. And then he's walking by. He's real mad. And he looks at Chris Thomasy and he says, and you're the leader of the lady parts. <laughs> <laughs> and he keeps walking by. And we're looking at, him, what do we do? You know, this, he was just, uh, you know, he wanted you to be aggressive. And Chris you know? was like, see you on church on Sunday, Coach <laughs> Lens. <laughs> yeah, see, see you on church on Sunday. Thomas sees the lenses will be on the front row. <laughs> That's hilarious. Oh, gosh. But, I mean, there's so many stories like that that people have. And, and uh, you know, every time we get together, and just you know, every time we get together, it's usually talk. we talk about Coach Lens. And, you know, we talked a little bit earlier about coaches and teachers and you know, you, you get kids build a bond with their coaches when mm-hmm. they play sports, you know, and they do with teachers as well. But there's something different about, you know, being on a court or being in a field and sweating and uh, uh, struggling through adversity and losing in the game and or winning and being victorious and having all those. You get those huge peaks and valleys of oh, emotions, yeah. you know, especially and in high school. Fall. Sp- when one week was. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, you know, and, and you you. You build all those emotions and you have all these peaks and valleys with these people and and they stay with you forever, yeah. you know, and and it's funny because like Nina always makes so you guys are always talking about old stuff and it's like, well, these are impressions, it's, you yeah, know, they don't go away, yeah. and, you know, in another 20 years. They're still there, mm-hmm. you know, and your dad was a huge part of that, you know, more so than I, I'm, you know, Coach Holt was big. Uh, you know, involved in a lot of people's lives and there's a few other ones, but you know, there's been a lot of coaches, and there's some that didn't stick around in, in your mind. Yeah. And he definitely was one of them. And a lot of it, again, like I said, it wasn't just his size or his voice. It was how he treated you and the things he did that, that kept you around. You know, that yeah, you ended up staying with him and, and, and gravitating. Don't cry. <laughs> Don't cry, because then I'm going to cry, and then Katie's going to yeah, cry. Sorry, Katie. start, <laughs> start crying, Katie. <laughs> Nobody cries by themselves. No, but it's true. It's true. Um, you know, and I, I, I think it's... I, I struggled with the being a coach's daughter and moving around. Yeah. I didn't really struggle with it. I mean, I made the most of it and went out, you know, first day. It's like, all right, here we go again. Hey, here I am. This is me. <laughs> New school. Yeah. So I kind of got used to it. And now, you know, I'm standing in the line of the restroom and I'm talking to somebody, made a new friend, right? That's kind of just what comes of that lifestyle. But, um, you know, I always thought like, God, oh, it's, it's got to suck for, you know, these type of professions that move around quite a bit. But it, you leave, look at all the impressions he's left in different yeah. areas, and I think that's great. It's a it's a, a good thing, and um, you know, it's not always it's it's always it's good for a, um, a school's program as well. But you get to touch all those different lives. Did you ever have him as a teacher? I I, I didn't. Well, I wish I would have. Me and Thomas, he had homemaking, <laughs> and then we got in trouble in homemaking. What did you learn in homemaking? <laughs> well, we just went to eat, and so. We got in trouble, so we dropped it. Must have been his prize. (laughs) And then we went, we dropped homemaking, went to his study hall class. But then we would go to his study hall class, check in, and then go back and hang out at the homemaking cottage. (laughs) So that was kind of, we didn't really have him for a class. It was just kind of like, hey, we're technically in your study hall, but we're going to go eat at the homemaking cottage. Well, I've always heard he, I mean, he taught what, like world geography, world history. And those were like his, he was a huge history and geography buff. And, you know, here I'd come sometime and like, where is Iraq? Or, you know, like if something's going on. Mm-hmm. And he's like, what do you mean? Get the, get the atlas. You know, and sit down and here's like the whole lesson. And then I'm getting who was president at that time. And then, you know, what led to this, you know, just everything, everything political and tied to whatever question I ask, it went on. And, uh, and I probably still can't remember it. So maybe it's a good thing. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, I, I've always heard like he was just as great in the classroom which makes me just as like proud um, yeah. and that, you know, everybody remembers his class. And I, you know, I wish I wouldn't have been a stupid high school kid and, and see, not, you know, would have seen that in a different light and, yeah. and taken his class. I may have learned a lot more probably, but it, it was a, it was a challenging class is what I heard. And, uh, but he, you know, did the whole like jeopardy, I think games where he was always throwing candy out and things like that. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. I remember one thing that's funny. I remember going to his classroom one day and I didn't, I didn't go to his classroom a lot. I tried to, you know, dodge, dodge yeah. dad in class. In, in we had him all day at home. So. I know. Right. So, um, but I remember I went in and this was after like, I think the remodel. So there was like the middle, wait, did that remodel happen while we were in school? 
I feel like we I were think they games. added a wing. Yeah, there was something, but his I thought I can't remember. Anyway, I remember going into his classroom, and I can't believe I'm going to say this. I'm not, oh, say <laughs> it. it's embarrassing for myself, but <laughs> but I was. Just, Hang on, let me turn the volume up. So uh, no, I literally like I I thought my kidney was rupturing or whatever I, appendix or not kidney rupturing. My appendix was rupturing, or I didn't know what what was going on. I had this major pain. Sarah, you're becoming a and, woman. <laughs> no, I just. <laughs> I, was, I think it was my senior year, and I walked in, and I was just like, I don't know what's happening. I think my appendix is rupturing. I don't and he's like, what side? And I was like, over here. And he's like, it's the other side. And I'm like, okay, well, maybe it's my kidney or what? And he's like, you don't even know where anything is. And he's like, it's gap. And like in front, classes, like in between class, people were just now starting to come in and filter into his classroom. There's people out in the hallway, and he's like, it's a gas bubble. And I'm like, seriously? You just said that? Like, what? why would you say that? And I was like, and you know what no. echoed down the hall. I know, exactly. Right? And so I'm sitting there, and I'm like, no, this hurts so bad. You know, I need to go home, blah, blah, blah. And he's like, go to class. It's gas. And I'm just like, oh. this is the kind of, this is, these are the responses <laughs> I got. But yet, you know, if somebody else walked in and they have a swollen ankle, it's like, let's get you to the ice bath. And you know, it's like, <laughs> but me, just walk it off. And I'm like, okay. And you know what? The pain went away later. <laughs> <laughs> it was gas. How'd it go? Away? No, I have no idea. <laughs> no idea. But I didn't get to go home. <laughs> so um, it was like towards the end of the day anyway you know I, w- I wish i was a smarter kid when i was younger because now that you tell me that i i as an adult i love history oh, and geography and it's like would it would have been something to be able to have a conversation about him and kind of pick his brain on that kind of stuff that would have been amazing to, to have those kind of conversations even back then i but, you still know, we like stupid. if i had like an atlas in the car, you know, if somebody else is driving. We, we literally were constantly in the back seat with the atlas. And I was just looking at the other states and we played the state game all the time where you'd have to name the states. And anyway, it was just, it was all about, yeah. Anytime we went somewhere, I was sitting in the back with the atlas and then I'd ask questions and he had all the answers. I don't know if they were right. He may have made some up, but <laughs> I'm pretty sure they were. But. What other things did he like doing for fun? Uh, he golfed and uh, he loved golfing and he could snap a... Uh, <laughs> driver anything over his <laughs> knee if that club was not working it probably wasn't going to make it to the next yeah. round <laughs> i mean literally i used to drive the cart um but there was one time as i got older when sean and i started dating um i i wanted to play i actually took golf at b county and i think i may have wrapped a three wood um i don't know where i learned that <laughs> or through it or something but um yeah so i wanted to start kind of learning to play and i'll never forget i think oh, where were we playing it may have been it may have been Beville. I think it was in Beville. We were at the at the Beville course up there on the loop. And he, um, uh, what was it? Oh, somebody, we asked him to play through or whatever, and they they didn't. Or no, we let somebody go through, and then somebody else would come up. I was, I was very slow, right? I had took a lot of shots. And he, but he didn't want to, like, just say, here, put your ball on the green. He wanted to let me finish. And yeah. he was helping me learn to play golf. And all of a sudden, we're sitting there, um, and I'm trying to chip my ball up under the green, and a ball lands probably about 10 to 15 feet behind us. Mm. And he looks back, and he's like, <laughs> get in the cart. <laughs> Pick up your ball. Oh, like, you know, he was the type that just like went by and just scooped up the ball, right? So, yeah, he's like, get in the cart. And he goes over there, and he's just like, you guys got a problem? <laughs> he's like... You want to play through? You come up and ask me how to play through. Anyway, it was just really, he's like, the ball landed 15 feet behind my daughter. I'm trying to teach her how to play. That could have hurt. Like, oh, yeah. Yeah. And he's like, anyway, it was just, it was, it was, um, it was a moment where I was like, mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and, I, and I bet they didn't say anything back to him. Yeah, they just stood there. Like, well, he goes, y'all want to play through? And they're like, no, wait. Oh, <laughs> he looked a lot smaller from like 200 yards away. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we didn't even see you get out of the car. We thought you had a three-year-old with you. <laughs> That's about right. That's so awesome. But, yeah, so he loved golfing. He loved his dogs. He hunted. Um, you know, he did a lot of like pheasant hunting up in um, up in the north. Well, he was from Minnesota. And mm-hmm. so, um, you know, he went up there a lot to Iowa area and Iowa, Minnesota and hunting. And, you know, he still had some really great friends and family and that he went to, to see up there quite a bit. Um, so hunting was a big thing, golfing, I mean, just pretty much anything. I mean, yeah. he was up for anything. Um, shooting, driving ranges, uh, or driving ranges, um, shooting ranges. Um, but, you know, and like, but for the most part, I mean, your your weeks were filled with Football. nightly coaching and then, you know, Friday night lights and then Saturday morning reviews. And then sometimes if the if the videos were good enough, they stuck around for the week and we, like, 
do you remember the the lucky falling flat on his face like yeah that one did we sh- i can't remember if like that went to y'all's house afterwards or something i can't remember but i just it made remember, the rounds <laughs> i just remember like you know my mom went walking in going what are y'all laughing at? And he just sat there. Oh, oh. And I think y'all, like he didn't realize it happened and maybe one of y'all told him. So he went and reviewed the tape and he just laughed, laughed, laughed. I mean, it just, for the, it was like America's Funniest Home Videos, you know, because that was popular at the time. Yeah. So he would just kind of put that in and just kind of chuckle at it for <laughs> as long as it could. What was it? He like kind of pushed him in to go play. Yeah. And it, it took like three steps and just... <laughs> Flat he, on his face. He kind of lost his, his footing. footing or something, yeah. <laughs> but in, in Lucky's defense, his hand was the size of Lucky's back. That's true. So, <laughs> Even with the shoulder pads on. He was the smallest guy out there, so... <laughs> I think it's so funny to look back, you know, because I haven't paid any... My kids didn't play football or anything, so I didn't pay attention to it very much. And But to look at like this... I'm like, these kids are running around naked out there on the field now. They're ch- Y'all used to haul around shoulder pads. Yeah. Like shoulder pads. They were huge. Now they're like the shoulder pads that somebody might wear to, you know, enhance their shoulders, like a woman in her little yeah. blazer or something. I'm like, you guys are not protected. They, y'all, the kids have bellies showing and all the leg is showing. And then you've got, they're on turf, most of them. Well, a lot of them don't even put knee pads in anymore. No. Or even like the hip pads or the tail pads. It is concerning. I'm just like, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's worse than roller derby, right? So, yeah. I mean, I had a lot more padding on than that, I feel like. <laughs> but if you think about it, it's like, wow. Yeah, no, I don't know. Anyway, I don't know how the game has changed so much, but or how much it's changed. But I just know that I feel like you guys are taking a lot of hits, and what? Y'all, y'all looked a lot better protected. I'm sure they're faster now with the less. Padding, yeah, I'm sure but. they're faster <laughs> and, and mobility is a lot better because yeah. everything was so bulky. But I know. but I think at the same time, and and I don't know, and I'll say I, I like to say a lot of things on this podcast that make <laughs> me sound like I know what I'm talking about, but I'm I'm so full of it. But, it, you know, I'm sure a lot of that equipment's gotten better. I mean, not wearing something doesn't make sense. But at the same time, you know, I think helmets have gotten a little bit better. Probably shoulder pads have gotten a little bit better. Uh, the filling and a lot of that stuff. But, I mean, there's still I don't know. I feel like if you have this much overhang, it's still better <laughs> well, it w- it than, was, like, this much. It was literally like a pillow. I know. Underneath I used to stuff. put on. Like, if they were hanging around, I was, like, when I was little, I used yeah. to put shoulder pads on. But... So yeah. tell me a little bit about in the, uh, some of the one thing that I really want to talk about, and I'm sure it's going to be uncomfortable because it'll be uncomfortable for me. So I'm sure it's uncomfortable for you. But his, some of the CTE stuff, mm-hmm. you know, there's a lot it, I, the research that I've done in it. And, you know, so people know neither one of the doctors, but you you lived that life and you experienced it with him. But, you know, uh, it seems like there's still a lot of uh research happening because oh, yeah. it's it's almost like in its infancy them finding out what causes it how it happens and you know apparently it's it's something that's different for each player each mm-hmm. athlete and and you know it's an, you know there's there's a lot of head trauma with football you know but there's a lot also in like uh uh combat sports you know even soccer things mm-hmm. of the things of that nature you know we always like we talked about when he was younger you know it was just say toughen up you know we'll get somebody else to fill that spot yeah. you know and now it's nice to see you know the the uh the old school football lover in me mm-hmm. goes smash the shit out of each other you know and uh but after you're 14 <laughs> is, is there <laughs> yeah so it's kind of like the whole um one of the concussion legacy found found yeah, let me make sure. Because they changed when we first were associated with them. They were uh, Sports Legacy Institute. Now it's Concussion Legacy Foundation. But they, it's the the big thing is not to like take down the NFL, take down football. It's really just to protect the protect your brain until it's completely matured. Yeah. Um, or at least, you know, to, for the most part. So 14 years old is kind of the what they're going play touch football or tag football, um, flag football. What is it called now? I don't even know. Yeah, I think <laughs> flag, it's I think flag play football. flag. Yeah, so it's play flag flag football until you're 14. And, you know, there's there's guys out there playing the pros who never made contact in football um, up until then, like, or didn't play until college. And even the Ivy League schools now are, I think, practicing a lot less, like, a lot less contact football. So. Yeah. But, um, yeah, I, I don't want to, like, go down a huge rabbit hole as I can, because sure. I can just, like, start, well, here's the difference. Here's where it starts. Here it goes. Well, um, let's, let's but, approach it from, yeah. let's approach it from, you know, if somebody's listening and they got a kid who's playing, you know, outside of, hey, you know, your kid shouldn't be playing contact football. You know, what, what are some things that, 
that you've learned that people should look for in their kid, you know, maybe after a practice and things like that? Um, so I'm not, I would really like direct, my first thing is just to direct everybody to like Concussion Legacy Foundation. They have so many resources available. Is that the name of the website? Concussion, Le- uh, yeah, it's, let's see, I'm actually put it down here. It's concussion, it's concussionfoundation.org. Okay. Concussionfoundation.org. Um, but, and they have so many resources there, but, and they've got, even got a podcast now. I just found that. Actually, oh, really? It just popped up, you know, I had, the last time I was on the site, it wasn't there, but, um, so it looks like they're, they're, they've grown so much since like my dad, I think was the 12th brain donation. Um, oh, really? Somewhere in the, you know, very early on. And, um, so if I'm, if I was just saying something, you know, like really, the biggest thing is is really not just to look if somebody's had a concussion, but it's you know how much they've been playing. I mean, because it's the repetitive, um, it's the repetitive blows to the head, uh, even if they're minor, um, even if it's just you hitting the ground and you think, oh, I'm fine, but your head's hit the ground, and at that time your brain is kind of hit back and forth, right? And so any of that um, just non natural movement of the brain inside <clears throat> your skull is is doing some sort of possibly damage. And so that repeated over and over um, can be can be damaging. Um, but I think right now it's funny. That it's not funny. I'm sorry. But they say you know after it's it's changed because it used to be like here's what you do after you have a concussion, and it's kind of changed. But it's really all about really monitoring. Um, and so it's you know if whether it's cognitive, whether it's physical, determine what's really bothering you. A lot of people it's migraines. Oops, excuse me. It's migraines. It's um, vision blurry you know um some people get um nauseated you know and can't stand up or vertigo things like that and so you want to address you know if it's if that's what's coming from cognitive issues then you want to rest your brain and not really you know even they don't advise playing video games for a while because that's your brain is working right? okay so when you yeah. say resting your brain it's it's doing maybe nothing. not tv not it's reading not really books doing anything nothing yeah. that's going to cause too much brain activity and that's for a while you know you don't want to do that for too long because then it's not you're not checking to make sure it's, you know, can, can function or do anything else. But you kind of want to start bringing those things in slowly. Um, but then you want to measure and make sure that any of those symptoms are not there and, and just kind of getting the rest. Because the big thing is, is, you know, if it's happened, if you know, if, if there's specifically a concussion that you, that you are aware of, like a full concussion, concussion, um, and you go get another one. And so you have post concussive, post concussion syndrome, PCS, um, then that's when it gets real bad. You know, it's, it's, mm. it's more of a, a higher risk. Um, and it's a protein that develops, right? It's a protein tau, yeah. So CTE is like, um, it's a degenerative brain disease where tau proteins deposit. And I actually had, I thought I had the picture, but I didn't. Um, but it's, yeah, t- tau proteins develop. And it's, it, my dad's brain was, they, they said for a man his size, um, the average brain they said weighs like three pounds. The human head, as we all know from Jerry Maguire, eight. weighs eight pounds. But the brain <laughs> itself, because like, everyone's looking at me, questioning. Uh, but the, <laughs> the brain um, weighs typically about three pounds, they said. They said, man, my dad's size could have been um, three and a half. And they said it was, uh, when they did his autopsy, it was um, less than two pounds. Mm. And the left side was almost like mush. Like it just, no form really? to it. And it just kind of caved in. Yeah. Um, and there was also um, brainstem injury, almost like a split. Um, mm. And some of the, what were some of the results that I had recently read? Um, like, well, anyway, a lot, a lot of the, the issues just with the brain tower development, um, you know, a lot of the frontal lobe impact it can lead to impulsivity, um, loss of, you know, control, loss of temper. Um, what's the... Did y'all see that in him at at a certain point? Yeah. And it's funny because it's, it, things kind of came on slowly, you know, and, and I was, I had gone to college, you know, gone off to college and then had kids and got married and had kids. And, um, you know, so I was kind of seeing things a little less because I wasn't there, you know, as much, as much as my mom. Yeah. But, um, it tore, you know, even after my, I guess my kids were both, I think both of them were here. So I'd come home and he'd be pissed off that he missed church, right? He's like, I keep changing the damn time. Like, <laughs> and I'm like, what do you mean? Church is always the same time. And he's like, no, I went there, sat there for 30 minutes, nobody showed up. And mom's like, he missed, he got there late, you know, or whatever. He couldn't, the concept of time, if he knew like it's seven o'clock or whatever, it was, she, anyway, she kind of has had started telling me these things, you know. Uh, like, so that was kind of the first time with yeah, him just so here's time. one thing, like I remember when she said, you know, he was upset because he missed church and I'd come home and I said, 
he said, I just can't tell time anymore. It's just, you know, and he kind of, he knew everything. He, he, they, that's the thing with this disease is, you know, what's happening to you, which makes it all seem scarier. Right. Yeah. Um, and so, but you, you kind of lose impulse and then you come back and you're like, Oh crap, that just happened. But so it's funny because we were sitting there talking and I said, what do you mean? You can't tell what time it is. And I said, look at the clock. And by that time, by, by that time everything in the house was like digital <laughs> to make it easier. But I said, okay, what time's the clock stay over there? And he's like three 30, super confident, right? Three 30. And I said, okay, what time's it going to be in 30 minutes? And he's sitting in his lazy boy and he just goes, and he grips like the arms, right? And he's like, what do you mean? And I said, that's the one I was like, holy shit. <laughs> like at that moment I was like, what do you mean? What do you mean? And I said, it's three 30 right now. And he goes, yes. Cause you can see it's three 30. And I said, what comes next? And he's like, and I said, well, so like in 30 minutes in a half hour, it's going to be, and he like, and I said, it's going to be four o'clock. And he goes, yeah, it's going to be four o'clock. And I said, so at three 30, in 30 minutes, what time is it going to be? And he still couldn't tell me four o'clock, even though I just said it, but I said it a different way. Yeah. And he just, lo- I mean, the fear, on, the look on his face, like, it just was like, oh, sh- like. How old was he at this time? Oh, was that? So it's probably 59 or 60. Okay. Um, still young. Yeah, I would say maybe 61, 61. I mean, he died when he was, what, 63, 64. Hmm. can't remember. Um, but yeah, so little things like that. I think, so what he, when he retired, um, he retired and he, what was really cute. My, my grandmother, um, got dementia. That wasn't the key part, but the, the, <laughs> sorry. Not, yeah, no, I know. And I put those little throw it, uh, add-ons <laughs> in the right places. Um, so my grandmother had dementia and, um, she came to live with my mom and dad. And so he had retired about that time because he was kind of struggling with the you know, more computer work and stuff that was, you know, sure. you didn't understand and it was learning something completely new and, you know, can't always fake it till you make it and being a teacher. And kids <laughs> so, were getting worse too. Yeah. So. Oh yeah. yeah. Uh, the first, I'll never forget the time he told me I came home from college and he said, I, you know, I'd ask him all the time how school is. And he said, somebody, he said, I had a kid come up and chest bump me. And I was like, like, Hey coach, how's it going? Like that chest bump. And he's like, no. And he said, I told him to do whatever, and he said no. And he said, you better do it now. Take out your books, do this, whatever it was. And then he said, or get out. And he, and he said, do it now. And he said the kid walked up to him and was like, chest bumped him and said, or what are you going to do about it? And he said, <laughs> he goes, you know what? He goes, Murder you. Well, he goes, <laughs> I crushed you. <laughs> <laughs> but he said... He said, at that point, it's like, I know that it, I lost all control. He's like, because I send kids to the office all the time. They get sent back. Send them, and they just kind of laugh. And then he'd be like, I just throw them out. Then I get in trouble for, for putting them in the hallway. You know, he's like, but I don't want them in there. If they're not yeah. going to pay attention, I'm there to teach. But anyway, um, I forgot where I was going. See, told you you're supposed to keep me on track. I'm sorry. I, I, got, I lost I got track. track. The stories. Um, but what was it? So talking about stories. Oh, he retired. That was my grandmother. The cute part. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So he took care of her for the last, I want to say two years of her life. And, um, and it was, I, I always wish that I could have been like a fly on the wall kind of there because, you know, some of the conversations I, when I was there, it was kind of cute. I'd be down the hallway and I'd hear my dad go, well, Claudia, what do you want to do today? And she'd say, well, I don't know. And she had kind of dementia, right? So she said, I don't know. What do you want to do? And he'd say, I don't know. What do you want to do? I don't know. What do you want? <laughs> but he would get up and, and that's make what her, they did that oh, day. Probably, what if, they, they actually made the rounds. This is the cute part. Cause my grandmother was like four foot 10, four mm. foot 11, a tiny little lady yeah. literally never got over like 70, 75 pounds. And then you have my dad and they would go to all the little church, um, senior lunches. Like they, they had their Tuesday at the Methodist or, you know, whatever days they were. Um, and I was like, Oh, it's just the cutest. <laughs> Really, and he'd like he'd take her to get her you know, if she was getting her hair done or whatever. She, because my mom was still teaching, so she was or she was at the primary, and so he just kind of, him and Claudia made the rounds. <laughs> <laughs> Luckily, they always made it home. <laughs> but um, had a big heart, yeah. And so I think after she passed away, you know, his like sense of purpose, like he had to do something, right? Mm. So um, I think he went back and tried to, tried to go teach. 
or just do like, oh, he was subbing. I, I think he was subbing is what it was. I think I remember him subbing. He went to sub, I think. And mom said, I, I believe that after the bell rang at the end of the day, he was still sitting in the room and he didn't realize like it was time to go. He thought yeah. he was waiting for the next class. And I think somebody kind of addressed that. And, um, I don't know how, I can't remember honestly how long, uh, he did that or, you know, if he was, but it was like, mm, can't do that. It was discovering the things that like couldn't do anymore, but being home alone, you know, during the day wasn't good. He, he needed some, he needed something, you know, purposeful to do. Um, and then you have that kind of with this disease is like the paranoia that kind of sets mm. in. So the longer you're kind of there with your thoughts and then things happening, you know, um, you get paranoid and, you know, just kind of start doing strange things and then just, anyway, it's just, um, yeah, it can kind of get out of control. And then, you know, a lot, oh, I know what I was saying earlier about the brainstem is the, that cause a lot of, causes a lot of sleeping issues. Uh, the brain stem damage and his, I think was actually separated oh, um, really? because it had, um, just the disease had kind of, I think, it, I think that's how it separates. But, um, so it, yeah. And this is a stupid question, but it's continuing to degenerate the whole time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. And it starts early on because I mean, these, some of these, what's, <clears throat> so with, with the, this organization, like I have, um, joined a family advisory board. Um, and this started, I want to say 2013, um, because, you know, what you start realizing is that you got a lot of big men, big football players out there. And what we realized in the last, um, let's see, March, 11, I think nine months of my dad's life is that nursing homes cannot handle a man that size. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, I mean, sometimes he didn't last 10 minutes in there and they're like, oh, we thought we could take him, but we didn't know what we were dealing with. And so, um, it, it almost seems like an epidemic, right? Yeah. I mean, where are all these men going to go? And not all of them have buku bucks saved up from the 70s playing, you know, football sure. in the 70s. Yeah. Um, so when I first joined the, this, you know, family advisory board that we kind of started up and, and it really kind of gives a support system to families and, and you can call them caregivers, but some people don't like that, you know, cause it's their husband. They don't have to yeah. be a caregiver, but caregiver <laughs> ends up getting the brunt into the deal a lot of times, you know, um, even though they're ones doing it there every day. And, uh, it's a hard job, but um, it's a, even was a hard he at job. home or what, did he find a place to go? He was at home on his birth on his the his last birthday. Uh, he we had to remove him from the home. Uh, from oh, home. Okay. I had to go. I I came from San Marcos and um, went down and I took care of paperwork and stuff. But we it just wasn't. It just ends up not being just a safe you know like environment. You have to look out for their safety and you know caregivers and mom's safety. And so um, so yeah. So we did. We started. We started nursing home hopping. Mm. <laughs> and uh yeah so um what did y'all find for him that was able a place that was able to take him the last uh, nowhere i mean like i said it, mm. it just ended up being kind of episode after episode because the thing is is they um the last thing what they're uh, what the great thing that this study has done is is kind of found what not to do yeah and the the last really resort um that you want to try is is you don't just give any random drugs but um but pharmaceuticals are kind of the last resort because they can have so many different adverse reactions or, or effects on different individuals and everybody's um, level of CTE or, and obviously CTE is not diagnosed until postmortem, right? Right. So they call it early onset, early onset Alzheimer's dementia um, until that time. But now that it's now, I think it's that it's more prominent and being coming known. People are just like, you know, the early, the, the early stages of possible CTE because you just can't say yeah. have CTE. But, um, so, that was what I oh, so yeah, just kind of hopping to these different places. Um, and, um, where was I, Gabe? Sorry. The, your, <laughs> the, the last place you were trying to find them. Oh, uh, so the last place that he ended up going, so he went to several different places, but the Frank Tejeda, um, in Floresville, the, uh, it's a veterans, it's hmm. a veterans, um, nursing home. He was there and mom would go up the, the nurses, they all, oh, dang it. <laughs> They all, they all loved him there. Sorry. Give me a second. Yeah. Um, mom would go up. They, they loved, she would go up. They'd dance. I mean, in there. It was just super sweet, right? So, um, and when, what did I tell you? Don't you sound kind of, it's funny, but we can, with this family advisory board, we've learned to kind of laugh at these things because there are people with shared, we found people with, sure. with shared common uh, commonalities with our loved ones. But he, he ended up being removed from this nursing home because somebody took his chair which was, and it was a family person, uh, or a family member visiting another person. And this was an Alzheimer's unit. 
mind you, he did not have Alzheimer's. Um, and it was very different. And so he had gone up and, uh, told this person, excuse me, you're in my chair. And they were like, I'm, they think they're dealing with an Alzheimer's person. I'll be at six, five and <laughs> yeah. she still, and she said, I think you can go find another chair or something. You know, we're like, no, this is not your chair. I'm sitting here. And he just went Blink, and tipped her out of the chair. <laughs> it was like, um, the hell it isn't. It is my chair. Right? <laughs> so even at, at that stage in life, you know, he was still kind of himself. Yeah, right? he's still great. <laughs> Um, you know, cause like when mom called me, she's so upset and she's like, Oh God, we've got to, find. so at that, when that happens though, they have to take him to a, a psychiatric ward. Mm. So he goes to the veterans, uh, in San Antonio, he was put in the veterans home in San Antonio. He was only there two weeks before he died. Um, which uh, is kind of a blessing in disguise, mm. you, you know, but you know, going, it's, what's funny is the lady at, at uh, Frank Tejeda nursing home, she said, she told me one time and I'd taken the boys there. She said, you know your dad does not have Alzheimer's, right? And I said, yes, ma'am, I'm pretty sure, you know, we, we know that, but that's what we keep getting diagnosed with early onset. And she said, well, I've worked here a really, really long time. And um, she said, your dad walked up the other day and said, I know why I'm here. It's because I have Alzheimer's, right? And she goes, uh-huh. And she, she's like, that's what I told him. She said, but... I've worked here a really long time. And when you have Alzheimer's, you can't tell me you have Alzheimer's. Yeah. <laughs> she said, nobody has ever done that. And she's like, he does not have Alzheimer's. And I said, I know. So anyway, um, yeah. So they were really, really great, great caregivers there. And, um, so it was a kind of a, um, a good place for him to be, you know, towards the end of his life. But so, uh, but leading that, the point that he didn't have Alzheimer's, we didn't, it was a week before he passed away and, you know, he's in the, um, funny, another funny, they're all sitting there. I had to get them up from the room where they're all watching football on a big screen TV. <laughs> <laughs> all of the men in the, in the psych, the geriatric psych unit. Um, and so, you know, so we go sit down and he's asking, you know, he's asking how my kids are by name. How are the boys? How's Ashton? How's Ian? He, that's, you know, his yeah. memory's there. It's just, it's, you know, on and off. Asked my mom, you still got that new car you got? That was hardly a car. It was like a little tiny Nissan with gerbils in the engine. But, <laughs> and she knows I feel that way, Mom. Because <laughs> I had to drive that sucker and it didn't go. Um, but anyway, so, uh, yeah. So anyway, I mean, he was, you know, it's just like it's, it's there. It's on. But when it's off, like, and it's in, funny in the same way with Alzheimer's. Like, they call that sundowners. Like, in the evening, they get a, a little more. Um, what it's is like it? the time of day. Things yeah, kind of come yes. on and off. And, uh at night, you know, they'd, they'd, they'd have to strap him down, you know, sometimes. And because he didn't know, I mean, I was on the phone with him one time. Mom had put him in a nursing home in Schulenburg and she was thankful that they found that one. I think it was Schulenburg. And, um, you know, so she, I called to find out, you know, I was like, is everything okay? You getting all moved in? And I always joke with him, you behaving yourself? <laughs> and he, yeah, yeah, I'm behaving myself. <laughs> and, uh, He's like, where's your mom? And I said, uh, she went to Walmart. She's getting you all your toiletries and everything. She's getting you set up, you know, for your room. I said, she'll be right back. And then all of a sudden I hear the phone drop and a big chaotic, you know, like, ah, get him up, get him. And they're like having to, somebody caught his eye and just like gave him a look. And it just triggered something that wasn't him. Yeah. Because that's that moment where it kind of goes on off. And it's that impulse, loss of impulse control. And he just kind of leaned over and they had it and they were like, your mom needs to come get him. And it literally, she hadn't even gotten back with his stuff and she had to drive him herself. But the thing, oh, well, I was talking about the drugs earlier, the pharmaceuticals. They, they, almost every place would give him Ativan. And Ativan, what is I, that for? Um, I think it's supposed to calm people down, but I, I is what I have heard. And then, but I hear that also in older people, it can have an adverse reaction. Well, you got older people and then with all those brain damage and issues, I mean, it was almost sending him over the edge. Like when mm. he would come out of it, it was just like this, you know, I don't even know what the bull out of the, yeah. <laughs> out of the so I, I guess it was kind of, you know, maybe squelling some of that, but when it was, when it was running out of juice, almost. all of a sudden he's, he's gone. Had it back yeah. Up. And yeah, it was just, uh, it was bad. And then, like I said, and then, you know, there were times where I, but I went home, <laughs> I went home on my, I think my mom's like 60th birthday or something. Was she 60. Yeah. Cause she, I went and, took her some stuff at the primary and then I stopped by and talked to my dad 
and I took him some flowers to give to him. I said, Hey, this is for mom from you. Yeah, sorry, mom. I'm telling if you're going to hear this. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I bought that, that last gift. <laughs> but I was like, this is, um, this is in her birthday's January, um, 16th. And so, um, that's kind of important the story, but he's sitting at the dining room table and I'm over here at the, in the kitchen at the bar. And I said, Hey, this is, um, I'm down here. It's mom's birthday. And he's like, it is. And I said, yes, but this is, I bought this for you to give to her. So make sure you say it's, you know, you, you bought it. And he was like, uh, okay, how old is she? And I said, 60. And he's like, what? <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, yes. And I said, and you're 64. And he's like, really? <laughs> and I said, yeah. And I was like, holy crap. <laughs> like, like I've been gone since Thanksgiving. Like, this is, you know, when you're not there all the time, you're yeah. still for holidays. You're like, holy shit, shit's progressing. Sorry. Uh, but, but yeah, it was kind of, it was kind of funny. And, but at that time, like, you know, we started, we're sitting there talking after the birthday talk and he said, um, he, and I didn't tell my mom actually this until she didn't hear it until we were doing our post mortem interviews with, um, Boston university and, Con uh, concussion legacy foundation. But at that time, you know, my dad was sitting at the table and he said, just out of the blue, I think I was maybe doing something in the dishes or something. And he said, you know that January is a very depressive month and more suicides occur in January than any other month. And I was like, uh, maybe that has to do with the sun not being out as much. And I'm like, I don't really know what to do with this. And I was, I just said, no, nah, you know, I didn't know that, but thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, and you know, I kind of like held that in when I probably should have told somebody, you know, but I didn't know it. I didn't, I didn't really know what to take of it. And I didn't know anything about really CTE at that time, but yeah. now you look at it and, um, the amount of suicides, especially in, in younger people, when we first started going to these family advisory board, we have, um, every two years we have, um, a family, what we call a family huddle. And, um, so all the families get together and at first it was like nerve wracking. You're like, I don't want to tell my story. Right. No, one wanted to know. Like, and, yeah. but then you turns out that everybody's stories are lining up and, and, you know, have their, their just differences, but they're, they're aligned. And, uh, there's a, there's a commonality. There's a total commonality. Yeah. And, and it just makes you feel like, Oh, thank God. I'm not, you know, we weren't alone. And, uh, but when you're like, but I don't want anybody else to have this, but I'm not alone. Um, so the first year was a lot of, um, you know, grown adult children, spouses like me and my mom. And then like the, I don't, maybe we didn't have one the next year. Maybe I didn't go, but the next one that I went to, I was shocked at how many parents were there. Mm. And so, um, you know, and one of the first kids, uh, or, you know, teenagers, I guess that committed suicide, um, yeah, you know, they, I think he went upstairs or something and they just didn't come down. And like he had a concussion, he was resting, but it just took his life. And it's just, um, they just don't, they don't really know. They're trying to do all these studies to figure out why, what's happening. Um, you know, it's just that kind of, there could be lots of things feeling left out, you know, that we're feeling depressed and all of this stuff and possibly things that were underlying issues that are just coming, um, more to surface because of the, the intensity and the, uh, the just the heightency of the concussions or sub concussive sub concussive hits over time. Well, I wonder but if... it, it's just sad. I mean, I was just like blown away. I'm like, holy crap, this yeah. is you know getting bad. And I just now people are, are, have something to associate it with. And you know, as far as whether it be sports or military, anything, there's so many things that can attribute to it. But now that you have kind of a name to it, I think you're you're just really seeing it a lot more well i wonder if i wonder if some of the suicide issues with that and this is just me speculating i don't i'm an idiot but you know uh, like she the nurse in florida had mentioned you know if somebody has alzheimer's they don't know that they have alzheimer's because they're deteriorating in a way that they don't know that they're yeah. deteriorating or if somebody with seems like from what i've read and what i've what i've seen you know online is is when somebody and what you've said today is is somebody with cte you know when they when they aren't having an issue with with memory loss they're they're there mm -hmm. 
So they're pro it's it they're they're more aware than somebody with Alzheimer's that something's happening to them. Yeah. You know, and that's gotta be something that really weighs on them when they're not having a, an episode where oh, they're, yeah. they're missing things out. And he used to always tell me, oh, it's this thing in my head. Like, that's yeah. what he called it, this thing in my, that, in my head. And he, Greg always said, like, I think I remember when this happened. Like, he thought it was, like, one thing, though. Yeah. Um, but he was like, I think I remember a pop in my head. And I'm like, well, that was probably something you should have gone to the doctor for. Like, <laughs> you're yeah. a pop in your head, go to the doctor. Um, but anyway, you know, yeah, it's just like this... I don't know that the lucidity when the lucidity is there and you're like, holy crap, this is happening to me. He actually, he knew that his brain was going to be done. He, well, he wanted it to, he saw, um, I think it was like a, a, um, did he ask for it or he was just aware? Well, so we didn't, we didn't do all the, the paperwork and everything. It was so new. He had seen Chris Nowinski, um, who's the founder on, I want to say it was like an average, I don't think we had HBO there and in three of us, they didn't have HBO, I don't think, but they saw like an either, uh, maybe he'd done, a show after that, a news, you know, just a news show or whatever after that, talking about the HBO Real Sports, I think is what it was. But um, kind of talking about this. And apparently my mom said he was like, I think I have this. And he's like, maybe we need to. So in in the time that he was in the nursing homes, we were communicating with like Sylvia Mackey, John Mackey's wife, um, and these uh, Eleanor Perfetto, these different um, ladies who were, you know, at this point where they're trying to get help from the NFL. Um, I hit wall after wall with the NFL, but whatever. Um, so we were just trying to really try take care of him. And that was, you know, the, the hardest thing, uh, just finding a place to, to manage him. But anyway, um, but yes, so he, he kind of knew, or obviously we weren't talking about that when he was in the nursing homes. We weren't like, Hey, we're going to donate your brain, yeah. you know, but, um, but that's a whole different process in itself. But, um, anyway, so yes, we had agreed to donate his brain because that was what he, what he talked about. Um, you know, doing, he's like, I don't think I have that. So I want to do that. Um, but a lot of these even kids or, or, or college kids are showing, you know, at least like stage one, uh, Greg was a stage four. Um, and, but yeah, they'll, they'll show traces of that tau protein in their brain post-mortem. And it's crazy. Some of the stuff that I saw online, they kind of talked about, and again, it, it, there's not any sort of definitive. Hey, here's the line in the sand where things happen and where things don't. Mm -hmm. But it's they. There was some thought that uh, at a certain at a certain I guess quantity of years being exposed to tr to to head injuries mm -hmm. and whatnot, uh, your likelihood goes up by a certain percentage. And so, of course, the more years that go yep. on, the higher the percentage goes up. So, I mean, there there's there was that kind of thing too to look at. But boxing. <laughs> just like you go through this list and you're like, <laughs> yeah. and this was even, I think my dad said he dove off of a, somebody in his family dared him to dive off of the uh, loft in a barn into a, some hay, but it wasn't like bales of hay. It was just loose hay. And he like literally knocked himself out <laughs> and he went right into the floor. So, I mean, you know, these kind of daredevil effects kind of started yeah. early on, but you know, he said he wouldn't, he always said he wouldn't have changed a thing. Um, but he wanted to make sure that others didn't suffer, you know, sure. kind of like he did. Um, like even Ashton was five years old sitting on his lap and he, I remember forgot was sitting right there next to him. He said, Papa, I want to be a, I'm going to be a football player just like you. And Greg like kind of sat there with, you know, pride like, Oh, oh yeah. Why don't you stick with golf or tennis? He said, there's a lot less injury and, and you can make just as much money. <laughs> <laughs> and so, yeah. And so he didn't do either. <laughs> but so, so when you donate a, when you donate an organ like that, or mm -hmm. you donate the brain, is this something where they study at one time, or is this something where... I think they still have it. Okay, so like they, she, they can continue this. Bank. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because, so, yeah. I, I, you know, you always find out that how the more time that goes by, the more the better the science gets, and, mm -hmm. and uh, I guess studying certain things get better. So it, it's nice that, to know that they'll be able to, to continuously continue. go back and revisit it. They are not short of brains right now. I can okay. tell you that they're short of help is more yeah. so than anything. But they are short of brains as far as, like, fem they, they really want, like, female athletes. Um and and there's a place you can go online if anybody wants and military I think is because they're working really closely. Dr. McKee is doing a lot of her research on and with the veterans um, or the VA right now, and I think that's close in proximity. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, I could be totally wrong, but I do Boston University and that whole area up there. If I'm not mistaken, but yeah, so um, VA and and you know women's are really trying to kind of to get more um, more of a, a study on that. Um, 
And yeah, anywhere you can go online on their website, and I think you can pledge to donate your brain. Oh, I see. So I think Chris Nowinski has like a TED talk where he like starts off and he's like, I'm Chris Nowinski. And at the, end this, at the end of this day or something, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask you for your brain or I'm, I'm going to want your brain. <laughs> so <laughs> basically, and it's, what's, what's so surreal was like, um, you know, I, I think I watched that guy when he was on, um, he was like, an, he was on an MTV wrestling show mm-hmm. and he was uh, Chris Harvard. And I, once like I heard about him and, and all this, you know, this Sports Legacy Institute at that time, I was like, oh, does that guy look familiar? And I was like, I watched that MTV show. And I was like, wow, this is weird. Um, so he literally had some issues and was calling me the day of Greg's funeral. And he's like, I am so sorry to be calling you right now. He's like, they're not releasing your dad's brain. And we have a certain amount of time that it has to get into, you know, it's got a certain process yeah. or whatever. And he's like, and it has to be on its way. Otherwise, it's all for nothing. And, um, he's like, can you please call them? Because once they heard it's going off for research, they were like, Whoa, <laughs> you know what? We did everything right. You know? yeah. And so I was like, I know I said, they were like, well, we need to do this by standards. I said, give it to him. Like now get it out now with his, everything has been lined up. And so anyway, like I said, I felt so bad calling me. Like, he's like, I know that you're preparing for funeral day. He said, but this has to be done. So yeah, he's got that. And he reaches out to people now, um, right away and says, you know, I know your child, I just read this. I think he's got an alert set up or something that, uh, it's a probably a pretty morbid filter. Yeah. <laughs> selection. But, but you know, it's, it's so uh, important, you know, yeah, it is. It, 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 it really is. And, and I mean, it, it's, it's unfortunate that, that we lost him as, as early as, mm-hmm. as we all did, you know, that you guys did. And, uh, you know, there's no doubt that he would, of course, he would have wanted more time yeah. with you guys and the grandkids and your mom, you know, but the efforts, when my mother-in-law got sick, you know, we did a little caretaking for her. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, as adults, we kind of put that in the back burner. We don't think about having to take care of somebody, yeah. especially somebody his size, you know. And, you know, the the links that you guys went through, and when you talk about taking him to George West and Schulenburg and Floresville, I mean, these places aren't close to where yeah. your mom was living, you know. And, I mean, it's it's... It's maximum effort on your guys' parts, but at the same time, you know, what? Else, of course you're going to do that. Yeah. You know, no doubt you're going to do those things. You know, and being able to, to donate his brain like that and him being aware at the time to be able to say, hey, I've got I've got a problem and I, I want to try helping, you know. I mean, that's a heavy weight you guys carry, you know, and, and I'm sure I, you still carry it to this day, but, you know, living in that moment and living through those things and, I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's not easy, you know, but, but the love you have for your dad and and the love that he had for you guys, it's, it's, uh, you know, we share stories about coach Linz and we talk about him and we have a good time and we talk about all the fun stuff, you know, but the, the real life shit is what you and your mom experienced, you know, and it's, it, uh, it's heartbreaking to know that you ought to go through that. You know, it's heartbreaking to know that, uh, uh, he experienced that, you know, but at the same time, it's, it's, uh, he's, he was, a he had broad shoulders and he carried a lot of weight, yeah. not physically, but, yeah, know. you know, he carried a lot of weight Figured his whole be, life, figuratively, yeah. you know, being a bouncer and, and, and being, going places that he didn't always maybe, uh, uh, was always treated the best yeah. because of being being a, such a large guy and you know people kids wanting to test him and having to be able to say you know hey this kid's stupid or whatever <laughs> you know but still being able to to be all those things and to be the football player and to be the coach and to be the teacher and still be the guy that dances with your mom you know uh, that's that's a that's a that's a quality person you know and uh, he raised a quality daughter and a quality oh, thanks, wife and you know it, it's just unfortunate that that we don't have him anymore you know but but the, the flip the, i was just fixing to say <laughs> but it's not like the, the legacy lives on yeah. that's the only way well, you, put it's in. you put it right here. yeah i mean i, I get watery the i just the legacy of granite greg lens will live on for generations to come greg touched so many lives he'll be missed but never forget you know, I, I get watery eye thinking about him, and I know everybody else loves him, misses him, and stuff, because uh, he was something else. You know, 
<laughs> he was. <laughs> he really was. Um, he was a fun. I think Greg is a perfect name. He was really gregarious. I mean, he was like, he walked in a room, made his presence known, and then shot the shit with you for as long as you wanted and would come back and do it again the next day. Like, I think it, like him and Lugs' his dad, I'm like, shoot, when they got together. Oh. L- it was Larry, a riot. I mean, Larry never was a loud laughing. one too. <laughs> yeah. He never stopped laughing. Yeah. That was, those were good times. And it's great to it's great to have those people in our lives mm-hmm. because you know regardless of how long we have them we may have them for a short period of time we may have them for and you know Larry was my grandmother's doctor he was come or nurse oh really coming, yeah I didn't know that mm-hmm. I didn't know that okay so the, they still got to see I was glad that him and Greg got to see each other whenever he'd come make house visits so oh that's awesome that's awesome I'm I'm thankful for the time that we had with him I, I'm yeah. thankful. You know, you're blessed, and your mom, he's blessed to have had y'all, but at the same time, you know, you guys were blessed to have him as long as y'all did, and, and uh, you know, he was, he was, uh, he was amazing, you I'm know? So, I'm glad he took me to that hick town. I made a lot of friends. I'm glad I got to meet you, Gabe. And, <laughs> um, I mean, I was, seriously, I went from Poteet to there, I think we went from Primont to Poteet to there, and I was like, why am I moving again? I was like, taking me to this one horse town, little hick town, and... And I loved it. Yeah. It was a great place. And he, he knew it too. Like, I think I said I wanted to try out for something, mascot or something like that, my sophomore year. Mm-hmm. And he said, I said, but I don't want to make something and move. Like, because I had just made drill team and poteet and we moved. I think I made cheerleader in junior high and we moved. And so I said, I want to try out for something. Are we going to move? <laughs> and he said, uh, that was into freshman year. And he goes, give me one more year. <laughs> and he goes, I'm just test it out one more year. And I was like, okay. So I waited one year and he loved it there. And he did. Yeah, he loved it a lot. You know, Georgios is very strange because by by any means, it's not a perfect town at all. And uh, <laughs> But at the same time, it's very. I find it very interesting when I see people like Coach Linz and you guys. And it's like uh, uh, he's been in a lot of places and he can go anywhere else he wants. But yet he's still, he still hung around. You know, even, yeah. even Coach even Holt after, was the type of yeah. guy, you know, that was – been all over the place, could go wherever he wants, but he spent a lot of time there in Georgia. Because West. the people are great. I mean, you know, yeah. when you meet people like that, where you can just, it's like the the cheers of towns. Mm-hmm. Where everybody knows your name. <laughs> You're probably <laughs> right. <laughs> and Cortez tacos every day. Oh, he was something oh, else. So was she. Man. You know, th- I know. They were they were another. You know, couple I can that... make meat and potato. I make his meat and potato. Oh, really? Like, spot on. I'd have to. Have, I'll I'd have, have to, to try. I will. I'll. Thank you, Sam. I have to try. That is the best. But I just want to tell you, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank you for your time. And tell your mama, thank you as well for sharing, uh, you know, having you share his stories with us. Absolutely. I'd love to. uh, You might see her going to Das Rec. Like she goes to swimming classes. So I'll have to tell her. Well, I might see her on my way to Naglins. Oh, (laughs) Naglins. She's going to Das Rec. I was wondering how you were. What's the place the. I asked you where Grand Zines. I was like, "Where's there a drive-through for Grand Zines?" And now I know because it's so close to work. Oh, it's so, so good there I too. Know, it is. There's a. a I stopped on the way home. Oh, we'll have to. Their, their baby back ribs are so good and stupid, okay. but anyway. But thank you again. I appreciate it. And uh, we love your daddy, and so do a whole lot of he people. He loved everybody there, and you guys especially had a special place in his heart. My class and a couple of classes around there, a special place in his heart. Yeah. He loved teasing you guys as much as you loved teasing him. <laughs> so, you know, it, earlier you were talking about a uh, Ward Smith telling you, telling you about a guy he met in Premont, uh, uh-huh. you know, uh, and talking about him in Fort Worth. And, you know, just so you and your mom know, that happens – Everywhere. Everywhere, yeah. It's, Everywhere. It's funny, yeah. Two people He's, run into each other, and they I they said, know great. I told him South Texas is like super small, but it, yeah, especially coaching. Yeah, it's a, yeah. there's always somebody somewhere. But okay. wonderful man, and thank you, Sarah. Yeah, thank you. I love you. Love you too, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for listening to the Gabe Molina podcast. 